Hi! Once I made a seashell crown and I have a video about that on my channel. But that crown was made in a hurry and turned out not as I expected and wanted it to be. But then I came across this very account on Instagram and realized that I should probably try making a more serious variant of this crown. The idea is that Chelsea, the creator of these crowns, makes them exactly the way I imagine a seashell crown. It's like when you have an idea in your head, but it's vague like a jelly bubble or I don't know, but then you see it in the real life and immediately understand, like, this is it, this is exactly what I've been thinking about. This is exactly what happened to me with Chelsea's crowns. I do love a lot of, of her works, but I didn't want to copy something from beginning to end. In such a case, you should look and look at a picture, highlight for yourself some basic moments, it might be a formula, composition, usage of some specific material, or just small nuances. After you have looked enough at pictures, go offline on Instagram or Pinterest or any site you use to boost your imagination, and till the end of your creative process, don't come back to these pictures, and all the questions you faced during the work, solve by yourself. To make the base, I decided to take artistic bendable wire, which I used in making crowns before. This material is very useful, because you can simply bend the wire at the shape of your head and get the ready contour of your head for the crown. When I was in France, I saw this fabric with glitter and couldn't resist my temptation to buy it, not knowing in what project I could possibly use it. It was bigger than my suitcase, so I had to bring it with me in the aircraft cabin, at least it matched my look. And because of this story, I learned from my subscriber that this material is called glitter lazarette. So you can google this material and buy it if necessary. By trial and error, trying it on my head a million times, I made the stencil for the bottom line of the crown. I wanted to make it look like a tiara, so the shape shouldn't be like a usual crown has, but like this. Going down shape. And it turns out that this stencil manages to cover this bottom line of a head. Using the stencil, I drew the bottom line on the main material and the upper, improvising line, I drew on the leatherette with a pencil. Actually, quite soon, I came to the conclusion that I wouldn't succeed in drawing ideal symmetrical sides, so I got to the draft again. If I'm not mistaken, this is a piece of tabletop paper, just for you to know. I started drawing such shapes, but then decided that it would be better to make one smooth line, and in this case, this special shape will be achieved with the help of seashells. So, I folded the stencil in two to get the symmetrical result and transferred the lines on paper. I cut it out this way, and that is how I get a very thick base on which I will attach the seashells. By the way, this time glitter will be on the inside of the crown, because I want it to look good on all sides because my previous one looked so gross on the back. I mean, it's not my level anymore. I think the seashells can easily break the floor. Well, okay. I keep my seashells in this box. Some of them were bought, some were given to me as gifts, some were picked up by me, and some were taken by my parents from the seaside. By the way, I bought a lot of such big shells from Zlatka, and I was especially happy with the small shells, because you can use them to fill the gaps between the bigger shells. They are exactly what I needed last time. I didn't film the long and torturing process of making this composition, because I knew at once that it would take pretty much time. So it turned out like this. 
This time I didn't have dyed shells like that time, so I decided to add some color to the shells I place. For this I took such mother-of-pearl pigments of tender colors and acrylic gloss varnish. If you watched the video about Anima, you might remember that there I mixed varnish and glitter and covered the sides of the box with it. So it's the same principle here, but instead of glitter, I use the pigments. For the small shells, I added to the first color a bit of gold plus varnish to make the color more transparent. And for the side ones, into the same color, I added a little of purple. It is not that distinctly seen, but the shade is a bit different. Next, it was possible to attach everything using hot glue. I chose this material because it would make the crown more secure. I mean, glue doesn't simply attach things, it performs as a kind of liquid fast solidifying clay. Maybe it's a bit strange comparison, but for me, the most important thing is for you to understand the idea. At first, we need to glue the huge seashells, literally with one drop, one but big. And to keep working, the crown should take its final half-round or round form, because if we glue everything to it while it is still straight, it will remain straight. I didn't want to buy a mannequin or some kind of a hat, the problem is not even in the price, I have no idea where to put it after the end of this project. But literally, recently, me and my boyfriend discussed how we spend the school breaks, and he told me that he and his friends made balls out of paper and tape. What's interesting, I recall that I had a huge roll of craft paper, which I got for 120 rubles. And these three facts in a second just perfectly got together in my head that I decided to make this paper hat. Yep, it looks like a pretty good hat. But the crown didn't want to stick to the hat, and the hat itself couldn't find its balance. I also didn't like these gaps, because of them the crown might become so crooked. Hopefully I had some soft air plasticine from AliExpress. I didn't have any plans where to use it, so it perfectly saved me in such a situation. And yeah, it was worth it. I sculpted a strip and put the crown on it, literally stretched it this way till it was dry and spread over the inner space under the crown. Also, the crown stuck a bit to the strip and became more secure than before. Here you can see, when I bended the crown, the small gaps appeared between the seashells. This is the reason why I didn't glue them thoroughly. All these gaps I will fill with these cute tiny shells and pearl half beads. Plus, I used quite a lot of hot glue, which, as I have already told you, strengthened the whole composition. To make everything fully symmetrical was difficult and not really necessary, because it is not how a C works. Keeping this in mind, I tried to make the general shape symmetrical, but it's one thing, and another is the inner design, which is a completely different thing. I would also like to add a little bit of rhinestones, it is a crown after all. But it is complicated to make the composition buying rhinestones on the internet, keeping in mind how to combine shapes and sizes. On top of everything else, it is expensive to buy all rhinestones separately. So I ordered on AliExpress such jewels for face and other parts of the body. Here all the rhinestones are already combined into particular ornaments. You can take a part of an ornament or completely transfer it on your artwork. These rhinestones have a sticky side, so you can easily unstick them. Plus, I had these little things of the same color, which I also used in this project.
Well, this is the result I achieved so far. However, there were still some gaps between the shells, and I didn't like it. To fill them, I took UV resin, mother of pearl pigments, and such glitter. Next, I simply pour this stuff in between the shells. At first, I fixed resin using UV light to avoid leaking. And then, when I had completed this step, I left the crown dry on the windowsill on the sunny side for several days to secure it for sure, because it won't fit under the lamp and it's not that fun to sit holding a flashlight. By the way, I recommend you working with a UV flashlight, at least in sunglasses, with the real UV protection. You must take care of your eyes. So this is how I filled all the gaps and, thanks to resin, the crown became much secure. Because of the physical features of resin, when it was drying, it squeezed my crown and it became 2 mm tighter, and I clearly felt this difference. The crown, for all its weight, and it is quite heavy, stayed on my head like a headband. Everything looked quite neat from the inside, but honestly, these ears had to be refined. I trimmed off a piece from glitter leather vet trimmings and simply glued them to the crown, and then started to trim it according to the shape. Next, I had to make the holes for a cord. I took a decorative hole punch and it handled one piece of leatherette quite well, so I marked the spot where I wanted to make the second hole, but two glued pieces didn't manage to squeeze into the hole punch because of this little bridge. Well, it is meant for paper after all. And here the best solution would be eyelets, but I didn't have them. I made a hole using a usual hole punch. And to connect the details, I took a velvet cord, which is not thin and matches the crown well. To never lose the cord, I took beads which looked like pearls from an old bracelet. These are not pearls, these are just beads. I slid them on pins and, after making a hole, secured everything. So this gives an opportunity to tight or loose the crown. I've broken it. Fortunately, it is fixable. Just give me a sec to glue it. And of course I wanted to organize a photo session in it. I just needed to find a dress and the most sensible decision would have been to hire it. I wanted a powdery pink-gray dress, which would accentuate the waist. To be precise, here is a waist and right away goes a skirt. But in all the showrooms, agencies, I don't know how to call them, pink dresses were of a piggy pink color. I also searched for blue dresses. The blue ones were also fully saturated, way too different from what I wanted. And at that moment I opened another account of a showroom on Instagram and saw that I could visit them, look at and try on the dresses. So I went there, because looking at all the countless photos of dresses, shown only from one side and which doesn't convey the initial colors and sometimes the shots are with terrible filters, my eyes hurt. Guys, there were so many dresses for every taste and color for every event. And there I found exactly the dress which I had visualized. It was the embodiment of the ideal dress for this crown. Well, Dress for Less showroom, you're in my heart. 
thank you very much for all your work. I will definitely come back for a dress for an event or photo session. I hope this video was interesting and useful for you. Write down in the comments, have you ever been in the situation when you start doing something from scratch that you did before, but now you do it with renewed energy and carry it to the ideal in your understanding. I hope, um, I have already said it, I love you this much. Bye. It looks better like this, right? It's my phone's light, into which I pry. I need to think up something.